It is believed that beauties are those lucky women who have perfect faces and bodies, but history refutes this misconception. They were admired by the most famous and influential men. Famous poems were dedicated to them, fortunes and even entire countries were thrown at their feet. But in the portraits we see ladies who are not beautiful at all. Why? Well, let's see. Which of the most famous beauties of the past can hardly be called beauties, and what was actually the secret of their attraction? What did the legendary Cleopatra really look like, and how did she get the title of one of the most beautiful women of all time? How did that Queen Margaret captivate men? Why was Anna of Austria considered one of the most beautiful women in Europe, and how did the bold and toothless Elizabeth Tudor become a recognized beauty? The most fatal ugly beauty of Russian history? How did the ugly laundress Martha Skavronska charm the Russian emperor so much? Cleopatra a symbol of female beauty of all times and places. One of the most beautiful women in the world's history. This is how the famous Cleopatra is portrayed in numerous films by the most beautiful actresses of cinema. All the biographers of Caesar said with one voice, Cleopatra had made a deep impression on the experienced ladies' man during the first meeting. He passionately fell in love with her. But why was he so stunned? Let's look at the lifetime portraits of the most beautiful woman of the ancient world. A hook-nosed, chinny, we see some masculine features on the coins with her image from Alexandria. And this is what the reconstruction based on all her lifetime images looks like. Historians of the British Museum concluded that Cleopatra, at least by the end of her 38-year life, was a rather stout, stocky woman of small stature. She was 1 meter 52 centimeters tall, had a long nose and bad teeth. Yes, it turns out that beauty was nowhere to come from. She belonged to the Ptolemaic dynasty, most of them were not beautiful. You can't help but think, what had she done to impress Caesar? So, it was not about the right face features, but a remarkable mind, excellent education, and charm. This is confirmed by the Greek historian Plutarch, who wrote that her external beauty was not incomparable, but she talked with an irresistible charm. Contemporaries also noted that everything in Cleopatra was full of voluptuousness. Her provocative sexuality was also emphasized by the Claudius, chosen with an exquisite taste. So, it turns out, better be born smart than beautiful, right? La Reine Margot Margaret of Valois, whom no one called La Reine Margot during her lifetime, by the way, was one of the most famous women in history. Thanks to the famous novel by Alexandre Dumas mostly, and its famous film adaptations. The court chronicler said of her, if there was ever somebody perfect in beauty, it was the Queen of Navarra. Now look at this portrait. Perfect in beauty was 21 years old. There were references that she was very similar to her mother, the shape of her face, slightly droopy cheeks, the shape of her eyebrows. At the same time, her contemporaries as one admired her appearance, white satin skin and her curvy forms. One of the ambassadors wrote, To go to court without seeing Margaret of Valois is to see neither France nor the French court. It is also interesting that Dumas and biographers described Margaret de Valois as Ravenhead and that the portraits she is obviously blonde. It turns out that Margaret sometimes wore a blonde curly wig, which was fashionable in those days. In it she poses for portraits. 
Well, how could a girl so far from being pretty seem to everyone a perfect beauty, not only flatters? Once again, it's all about charm, intellect and the ability to present oneself. It is known that Margaret was famous for her mind. By the age of 16, she had learned several languages, read Homer in the original, played music, studied philosophy, mathematics and anatomy. Contemporaries also noted her cloth sense. She chose outfits in such a way that she always attracted everyone's attention. She could show herself in black for no reason, or with her hair down, because it suits her. In general, intellect, taste, charm and education – that was the recipe of her famous beauty. The Virgin Queen The fame of the most beautiful woman of her time was also fixed on the famous Virgin Queen, Elizabeth Tudor, the daughter of Anne Boleyn, who was executed by her husband Henry VIII. The Queen herself also tried to be beautiful. Tones of makeup, luxurious outfits… But it turns out she tried to hide her defects with cosmetics. At the age of 29, Elizabeth suffered a serious illness and lost all her hair, and therefore constantly wore wigs. In addition, there were marks of smallpox on her face, which she made up with tons of powder, which was full of harmful substances and poisons. The lead in the powder made the queen's skin grey. In addition, she had rotten teeth, which smelled terribly. The thing is, Elizabeth Tudor had a sweet tooth and couldn't help herself. But if you can't change yourself, change the circumstances. And the queen made black teeth fashionable. Now, the poor ladies with white smiles were forced to color their teeth black not to seem ugly. In public, the queen put so much makeup on, but what was under it, she tried to hide from everyone. Elizabeth even ordered to remove all the mirrors from her room, because under the layers of white paint, luxurious clothes and jewelry, there was not a brilliant queen, but an almost bald old woman with a pockmarked face and no teeth. But the glory of the most beautiful lady was created by her subjects, who tried their best to embellish her appearance so much so that it's difficult to restore the natural appearance of Elizabeth. Portraits present her as an object of worship and flatter her so much. Anne of Austria Anne of Austria is another famous beauty on the throne. In the Dumas novel, the all-powerful Cardinal Richelieu and the Duke of Buckingham were madly in love with her. Of course, it is a novel and the larger part of it is just fiction. But that Queen Anne of Austria from the Three Musketeers really was known as the first beauty of Europe. And here is how she was portrayed by the famous painter Rubens. In the portrait, she is about 25 years old. She and her father belong to the Habsburgs, who were famous for their, so to say, unattractive appearance because they used to contract marriages between close relatives. Her husband, according to court rumors, spent all his time with his minions and was not interested in his wife at all, and came to her bedroom only under the pressure of the Pope, the Spanish ambassador and later Richelieu. As a result, for 23 years the king and queen had no children, and according to rumors, only under serious pressure from Richelieu, the king fulfilled his duties and the couple had got two sons. One of them is known as the Sun King Louis XIV. By the way, that story with the pendants and the Duke of Buckingham is not just a fiction of Dumas. It was described by the courtier and philosopher François de la Rochefoucauld in his memoirs. However, some contemporaries considered La Rochefoucauld memoirs a lie. According to one version, the legend of the incomparable beauty of Anne appeared in the Spanish court, which declared each princess a beauty of all time. 
Catherine the First. One of the most fatal beauties of our history, at whose feet a loving man through an entire empire was a peasant, Marta Skavronska, who went down in history as the Russian Empress Catherine I. Just imagine what a fantastic career, from a laundress to a regnant empress. But what was it that seduced the Tsar, spoiled by the women's attention? Let's take a look at her portrait. It is difficult to call her beauty, however, men contemporaries described her as very attractive. Before the Tsar, Menshikov lost his head over her, but women didn't like her at all. They said she was an ordinary simpleton, without any taste. It was true, she was just an illiterate peasant woman who had been a campaign wife of some Peter's associates previously. But after the exquisite boy or daughter Yvdekiel Lapuchina or the refined German Anne Mons, how could the Tsar get interested in her? It is quite possible that the whole point is that she was a real associate of Peter. She always accompanied him on all trips without exception, even when she was pregnant, shared with him all the hardships of camping romance. She slept in tents or even on the street, at what they got, and as a real friend of life, she was attentive to Peter. The emperor suffered epileptic seizures, and she was the only one who could recognize the slightest signs of an impending attack and make it less intense. In the same way, she was perfectly aware of the slightest shades of Peter's sharply changing mood and was able to extinguish another explosion. She also behaved like a true teammate when the emperor was in danger during the Prud campaign. She offered to seduce the enemy who surrounded the Russians with expensive gifts and without a thought took off all the jewelry. On the other hand, Martha Skavronska turned out to be like Peter's mother, Natalia Narushkina, whom he loved very much. Is that the answer? Or maybe there was an unsolvable mystery in all this, so their names get tall tales and legends. And they made us try to understand, what is beauty? And does it have anything to do with appearance, body and face? Or is it a reflection of the inner content, the self-confidence gained thanks to the intellect? Is it possible to become a beautiful without being a beauty? All the famous beauties of history proved it with their lives. Yes. Do like and subscribe if you enjoyed this story. Oh, and click on the bell so you get notified when the new episode comes out.